Hello fellow gamers, as advertised in the thumbnail, let's go straight to the biggest flaw. As a warning, this flaw is not for everybody because playing with this configuration is rare. The flaw occurs when you play the keyboard slightly elevated due to desk space constraints or maybe that is your preference. It could also happen when you elevate your wrist rest. Now this flaw won't happen to 90% of the players, but if you do happen to play with an elevated keyboard, it will be upsetting that you have spent $200-ish for this keyboard and not enjoy playing it. Now I mentioned this keyboard is $230 on release day, which many considered one of its cons. I bought mine at a 23% discount, which I believe is a pretty good price. Today this keyboard sits at these prices in your leading stores in America. Keep in mind that Black Friday is coming up and you might get good deals on this one. While the K100's best feature is the 4000 or I mean 8000 polling rate, the moment you turn it on it'll also give you a warning that states higher USB polling rates use additional system processing power and that warning sounds like it's gonna use more CPU. Well it seems I have started with the K100's cons, I'm gonna add one more. Last downside for me is that the USB cable is so thick and hard to cable manage since it's hard to bend, especially on my setup since my setup is so tight. That's it for the cons, but do you know why I still think it's worth it? Okay, I've been using this for 2 months and so far the switch has been an upgrade comfort wise. It's a noticeable improvement over the Cherry MX Red and the ease of use from red to OPX has been smooth for me. I just did from it for like maybe 2 hours of use, no problem for that. And as for the f polling rate, it's very good for playing FPS game, oh wait, let me fix that for you. It's now available on 8000Hz polling rate. But going back, it's good for FPS games like CSGO and Valorant. It gives you a slight advantage over your opponents. Although 8000 Hz feels like times 8 over 1000 Hz, but I believe that's just a fraction, fraction of a second there. Corsair also introduced the IQ control wheel. This might be helpful in productivity work, who knows, someone will find a way to make use of this. But for now, it seems like people doesn't really think of this as much, it's just a new feature. Let's go to the RGB. This keyboard has a spectacular RGB improvement versus its previous flagship, the K95 Platinum. The 44 light zones on the sides helps illuminate your mousepad and it'll make a cheap mousepad looks expensive. Just look at that, ain't it a beauty? Well I got one more. The new font that seems to get the praise of mainstream reviewers reduces the overall lighting of the keycaps over the previous flagship mainly because the previous font used was bold and it let more light shine through. From the K65, I had a pretty rough time adjusting for this 6 dedicated macro keys, but if you're already used to playing with 6 additional macro keys, that would be no problem for you. The wrist rest is the best I got so far, better than my previous wrist rest, that's for sure. The wrist rest is cushion is soft with a small logo of coarse hair. Again, as long as the keyboard or the wrist rest is not elevated. Also others claim that they have difficulty on typing from 1mm actuation point to 4mm. I don't have that problem, it's pretty smooth transition for me. And overall I think this product is good especially when you buy it with great discounts. That's my take on the Corsair K100. And the last part of this video will be the OPX switch versus the Cherry MX Red sound test. 